Uh, my name's James Brown. I'm a magician, a pickpocket, and a hypnotist. We'll give you the condensed version. I utilize the skills of magic, misdirection, psychology, showmanship as well, um, to kind of influence people's behavior and to change people's moods. Now, what I find fascinating with all of this is that uh, having spent the day with you all here and having listened to, uh, to professors, to lords as well, mm, Okay, just me then. Um, <laughs> and all these sort of, you know, uh, medical people who, who've got all this, this amazing academic knowledge and this, you know, accumulation of l years of skills. And then there's me at the end. Uh, now, I don't have a, an academic background. I will be open and honest with you all about this. I do not have an uh, academic background. What I have is a practical doing it background. Uh, I've always been a firm believer in, in just getting out there and, and doing things, putting things into practice, rather than theorizing and being uh, academically led. Now, a lot of the stuff I may well be talking about uh, to you now, you might be thinking to yourself, yes, but where is the evidence-based research behind it all? <laughs> well, while you're all off looking for the evidence-based research, I'm just going to get on and do it, if that's all right with you. In life, uh, you've probably all heard this, uh, you have the, uh, the optimist who believes the glass is half full. You have the pessimist who believes the glass is half empty. I'm the, opp I'm the opportunist, I simply laugh and drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What I want to, uh, to spend a few minutes talking to you about today, um, it's kind of a, you know, bringing things together, I hope, is I want to talk about the thing that is at the heart, the very center of everything I do, and that is belief. I think belief, and I will put this to you, and this is for you to chew over, to mull over in your own good time and have conversations about, but I think belief is the single most powerful thing, entity, that we have. Belief is this bizarre and odd thing that can change the very reality that we live in. Belief has the power to override everything that we, we understand. Belief can change the structure of science even. It can, it can alter our perception of reality. It can alter other people's perception of reality. All you have to do is look in the world around you and you can see how belief can transform people in good ways and not so good ways too. I think belief is also something that we underestimate. Within the medical profession, I believe that you could utilize belief a lot more than you do. That you can use suggestion. Uh, I, I'm gonna use the word manipulation occasionally and please don't have a negative thought process around that word. I love manipulation, it's a great thing. There's one of the, the things I, I enjoy doing more than anything else is, is using suggestion to manipulate belief. It's even better when it's somebody else's belief. Let, let's, I tell you what, let's, uh, let's demonstrate this. Can we bring the house lights up for just a moment? Would that be okay? Can we get some lights in here so I can see you lovely, wonderful people? Okay, maybe not. Turn them down. No, 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 no. Could you all do this with me? Uh, now, you, you've, you've had a, lo a fairly long day. It's been a, a, a really exhilarating, exciting day. I mean, I've certainly enjoyed myself. Have you enjoyed yourselves today, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's been fantastic. I, I want you to exercise your imaginations for a few moments. I want you to uh, kind of, you know, you know, you know that, that sort of really critical, analytical minds that you've got, that is really sort of deeply scientific, yeah? But you can only, you can only really work something out if you've got a big blackboard and some chalk. I want you to put that mind to one side for a moment, and I want you to engage your imagination. Now, earlier on, we were, we were talking about music and memory. And what a fantastic way of really bringing out the, the feelings and emotions and the imaginations that we all have. And I want you to engage those things now in a really simple way. Can you all make an OK sign with your finger, finger and thumb? 
Now, very specifically, I'd like you to put the, f the, the, the pad of your finger and thumb together. And for a few moments, I want you to look at, uh, at your finger and thumb. No wor nowhere else. Don't worry about what other people are doing. You can just really focus on your own finger and your own thumb. I want you to listen to what I have to say to you. I want you to really engage with what I'm saying. I want you to really focus your mind in now. That's it. I want you to imagine. Imagine a lump of superglue. Imagine something really sticky, tacky, gluey between your thumb and finger. Maybe you can start by noticing the warmth of that liquid. Maybe you can notice this, this texture, the feeling of that liquid between your thumb and finger. And right now, as it begins to slowly cool down, as that glue begins to harden and set, notice the way your finger and thumb just begin to squeeze tighter and tighter together. Notice the ways your fingers begin to lock and stick and glue as that glue starts to set tighter and tighter. I want you to imagine that glue setting. I want you to be aware of the moment it completely locks, sticks, glues and sets together. And when it does, when you are sure it has set, when you know it's set, I want you to try and separate your finger and find you can't. Try and separate your fingers and find they glue even tighter together. And the more you try and separate them, the more you find they glue. Try. Try now. Go on. Try as hard as you can to separate your finger and thumb and find that they glue and stick and lock tighter and tighter together. Really try. Try as hard as you possibly can and find they stick and glue tighter and tighter and tighter. And the more you try, the harder it gets. The more you try, the more it just sticks and glues. And I want you to be honest right now. The people who cannot unglue their fingers, no matter how hard you try, even now as I'm saying this, you just can't do it. The people who cannot separate their fingers, I want you to stand up so we can see. Don't be ashamed, don't be surprised. Stand up, be honest. Hold those stuck fingers up in the air and show everybody that they're stuck. Now I can see that there are more of you with stuck fingers than are standing, but that's good too. Those people who are standing right now, notice that no matter how hard you try and unstick them, you can't really, really try. Don't pretend, really try. That's it, now stop pretending, stop imagining this and notice that they just separate instantly and completely. Now, <laughs> only my, my, my friend, what's your name just there? Sorry? I, uh, Gret? Grit? Grit. That's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> I realized in that horrible moment I could have said something very inappropriate and offensive. And essentially now I have. Um, <laughs> Uh, Grit, would you, uh, would you stand up? Stand up for me? Uh, could, you, could you guys kind of let him just slowly move this way? If you ask it, you're doing well. Good man, good man yourself. Uh, that's it, a little bit further along, a little bit further along, and you'll find as you come up on stage, people will spontaneously clap. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Grit? who is currently a rabbit in the headlights. So, uh, what I want to, uh, the whole thing about this is belief. It's an amazing thing. Now, by the way, for any of you who've just kind of went like that and nothing happened, uh, that's one of two possible reasons. Number one, you didn't understand what I was asking you to do. And that's, you know, <laughs> considering. No, okay. Um, <laughs> it's been a long day. It's not their fault. Slightly their fault. The other possibility, of course, is in that moment when I asked you to test your imagination, a little voice in your head perked up and said, come on, do it, prove that you can do this, prove that this doesn't work on me. <laughs> mm. I'm not suggestible. Think about the irony of that statement. You gave yourself a suggestion and accepted it. Well done, you. <laughs> OK, stand just there. Put your feet shoulder width apart for me, shoulder width apart. Now, unlike you folks in the medical profession who have to be incredibly ethical about everything you do, I don't. <laughs> Good man. Put one foot forward so it's heel and toe in line with the other. That's it. And just look straight down at your toe. Look straight down at your toe. OK. Just in your mind now, I want you to imagine that sensation you had a few moments ago when your foot, uh, sorry, your, your fingers stuck together. Yeah. And I want you to kind of just start imagining that sensation as it was in your fingers and how it felt and how you experienced that. And just send that information down to your foot until you can experience that 
right now in your foot as it just begins to stick and glue and lock tighter and tighter and tighter. And when you're sure it's glued, try and lift it and find you can't. That's it. Now, I don't know whether the foot sticks more than the heel does or if it's the heel sticking more than the toe, but you'll find that spreads out until it completely sticks and locks. Good. Hmm. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, maybe there's something postural going on here. Maybe there's something postural. But that won't account for the fact that this foot here is stuck too. Try and lift either foot and find you can't. That's it, because they're completely glued and stuck and locked to the floor. Now, bearing in mind something very important, uh, Grit, I think your name was, <laughs> you're not hypnotised, are you? You feel absolutely normal, completely lucid, you, you're aware of everything, there's nothing, there's no strange changes going on in your head, you're not in an altered state of reality, but for some reason both of your feet are completely stuck to the floor. Yep. Yeah. Which is really odd when you consider that your hand can also stick and glue and lock to your head. In exactly the same way that your feet glue to the floor, you can find that your hand sticks to your head completely stuck <laughs> and glued and locked tightly. Now this is, you're, you're a medical student, are you? Yeah. Are, you are you a doctor or a medical uh, student? Medical. You're a medical student. Yeah. Now this, this is absolutely defying the laws of physics right now, isn't it? Because there is nothing, there is no reason why he should be stuck, <laughs> tightly locked in this position, apart from one single reason. And that is because he has accepted a belief. And that will override everything else. And I just want you to think for just a few moments as how powerful that is. You as doctors, it's really funny this is. <laughs> you as doctors are in a unique position because most of the people that come to you into, into the clinic situation, into the hospital situations, come with this sort of intense emotional experience that they're having with fears and trepidations. They are already highly suggestible. And you, in a position of authority, can utilize that in a very positive and beneficial way. OK, I'm demonstrating this in a kind of slightly funny way, maybe. But I'm doing it because I want you to understand how powerful it is. We're not talking about altered states here. We're not talking about hypnotizing somebody in this, you know, um, smooth FM voice. That's right, as you start to drift deeper and deeper into this... Uh, none of that nonsense. It's just about understanding how to manipulate belief in a positive way. So look at me a minute. Um, you, you, you'll just find that your mind opens up a lot more and becomes suggestible as this unlocks here. In three, two, one, it unlocks now. And you can just allow it to just drift down to your side, nice and comfortably. That's absolutely fine. Look at me. Look at me, what's your name? Prit. Yeah, just, no, like proper name, just give me your full name. Pritesh. Pritesh, okay. Um, Pritesh, uh, what is it you're not thinking about right now? You know that feeling you get when you wake up in the morning and you've had a dream, and the more you try and remember the dream, the further from your mind it goes? And the more you try and think about that dream, the further from your mind it goes. You know how that feels, don't you? Yeah, you're kind of feeling that now. Yeah, just try and find your name and just see it's gone for a moment. And the more you try and think about your... That's it, it just goes completely. Try and say your name and just find it's just gone. <laughs> try, try and just, try, try now just to say your name and it just find it's, it's like the words there, you know it's on the tip of your tongue, but it just won't come out. And the more you try and make it come out, it just, it doesn't, it's, it's almost like there's like a constriction. It's like, it's almost like, it, can you even just try and get some sound out and it, it just, <laughs> just nothing at all. Really try. I can't say anything. Is that That's bizarre? Right. It, listen to that. I can't say anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah? <laughs> it's bizarre, isn't it? But this is all about the manipulation of simply belief, the suggestibility that every one of us has. If any of you are sat here thinking, I'm not suggestible, you are. It just so happens that the best hypnotist that you know is you. You've spent a lifetime giving yourself suggestions. Put your hand up if you're a medical student. Put your hand up if you're a medical student. <laughs> and find your hand sticks in the air. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, that's just cruel. I'm really sorry. 
until I do this, and then you can just lower it down again. <laughs> Puppet. Um, <laughs> think about the suggestions you've given yourselves over the years. The negative ones, the I can'ts. Yeah, I, I can't do this, I find this difficult. Yeah, um, my wife for many years uh, convinced herself that she was no good at maths. And on a daily basis, almost, any time a mathematical problem came up, she would remind herself that she couldn't do maths. What was the outcome of that? She couldn't do maths. <laughs> this is a good fun one in a social setting, when you're next with a group of friends, people you don't maybe know entirely that well. Just throw out the notion of spiders and wait for the person who has a fear of spiders to go, oh, I'm scared of spiders. They didn't need to tell you that, but they did need to remind themselves, because what on earth would happen if they forgot about their phobia? <laughs> I find this a fascinating field. I genuinely do. I find this a really fascinating thing, that the human mind is the way it is. As I said at the beginning, you can spend all the time you like researching and quantifying it as much as you want to. And for some of you, there's a necessity to do that. I've spent nearly 20 years now just doing it. And yes, there are a lot of little minute skills that are involved in it. You know, you might think, well, you just pick the best person in the room. Of course it would work. Trust me, if you'd give me another 20 minutes, I'd have thrown a paper ball out and done exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter to me at all. This was because of a time constraint, not because of my constraints. How are your feet, by the way? Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and this is interesting, too, because we're talking about belief and imagination. What would happen right now if you just decided to... Well, actually, let's take a step back. You, you know that your feet aren't really stuck, that this is actually just something in your mind. This is an imagination. You're imagining that they're stuck. So what would happen if you just stopped imagining it now? How do you do that? Just... <laughs> in fact... In fact, could you imagine being able to imagine that they were no longer stuck? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. It would be easy to do, wouldn't it? Yeah. You could just imagine right now that you could move your feet. Imagine that you can just lift your feet up. Well, that's a good <laughs> and the other one. And the other one, too. A massive round of applause is well deserved. Thank you very much indeed. For years and years, the idea of hypnosis, the idea of suggestion, has been wrapped up in this air of mystery and wonder. And for some cultures, it's deemed to be evil and wrong in many ways. It's simply because it's not understood. And I find it very saddening that even today, there are many people out there who have completely the wrong view about suggestion and about hypnosis. The problem is that for years and years, hypnosis was either in the camp of the entertainer, the stage hypnotist, yeah, which has its roots in mesmerism and the long, dark coat and the big goatee beard. I tried growing a goatee beard. It looked really stupid. <laughs> it didn't have the air. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I tweeted this earlier. Uh, I don't know if Lord Winston is still around, but my goodness me, what an amazing tash that is. <laughs> hypnosis has been misunderstood for many years because people still equate hypnosis to this <clears throat> sleep-like thing, this slumped over a chair, this very theatrical bias that it has, because that's what we, as performers, need you to see. It's got to be engaging, entertaining. There's no good just giving a suggestion and it taking. We've got to give it some theatre, some theatrics. We've got to make it a show. On the other side of the coin, you've got the therapy, um, what I would refer to largely as relaxer therapy. Come into my... St come, in, come in here, because I've got this lovely hypnotic chair for you. And you can come in and you can sit down and you can relax. And I'll play some whale music. I don't know about you, but I find whale music bloody annoying. <laughs> but for some, it's relaxing. So the whale music goes on, and they're asked to close their eyes, and the therapist leans down while the person's eyes are closed and picks up his notebook, and then reads a script to you. 
for 45 minutes. And at the end of that therapeutic session, you feel better. Well, you feel relaxed. The problem is that both of these fields have reason to hold back the truth of what is going on. Now, I, as I said at the beginning, I, I give this to you for th food for thought, stuff to chew over. But in my experience, 45 minutes to remove somebody's fear of spiders is 35 minutes bloody wasted. It shouldn't take that long because it's still clouded in mystery and all of this nonsense. Every single thing that I've ever seen done under classical induced hypnosis, that whole lengthy blah 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 nonsense, can be done without the person closing their eyes. That I can take a medical student here at IC, bring him up onto the stage, at no point induce any sense of an altered state, yet stick his feet to the floor, stick his hands to his head, and make him forget his own name. And let's face it, grit is a really easy one to remember. <laughs> if nothing else, this, this, uh, this evening, this afternoon, I hope that I've just made you think a little bit more about how you can use language and suggestion, not just the words you speak, but the congruency of body language. The way that you can show somebody and change the way that they feel, their emotional state, just by altering what you say to them and what you do. If anything, today has told me that the future of the medical profession should absolutely be about connecting with people. Not diseases, not deformities, illnesses, medical terminology, but connecting with human beings connecting with the real person. And you only connect with the real person when you let your guard down a little bit, where you step out of this, you know, in, in, in hypnotherapy, it's, it's all about hiding behind the plaque on the wall. Yeah? If you ever go to a hypnotherapist's, uh, hypnotherapist's office, I can almost guarantee there will be lots of certificates saying how great they are and all the training courses they've gone on an awful lot of these practitioners will be hiding behind them because they're too afraid to just step out and make those changes and do those things and connect with real people. The next time you have a patient, I mentioned this to somebody earlier, it's really simple stuff. Uh, somebody who's into pharmacology here, tell me how long on average it takes for paracetamol to have an effect, to actually, to actually start having an effect on pain. Somebody throw me out a, a number. Minutes. How many minutes does it take? 11. Sorry? 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Do we all concur? Do, do the medical board agree with this gentleman's? <laughs> Nobody's shot you down in flames, my man. It looks like you're on a, on a winner there. 11 minutes. So 11 minutes from taking a, a paracetamol to it actually having some effect. What if I gave you a paracetamol? And with all the conviction and the, the, the credibility of my position as your doctor, I say to you, here you go, here's a paracetamol. Um, I don't know if you'll notice this effect immediately or in the next five minutes, but as soon as you do notice the effect, you let me know. I guarantee that the vast majority of people you were to say that to would report a benefit within five minutes because the language kind of makes it happen. Yeah? I don't know whether you'll notice the effect immediately or in the next five minutes. And you watch them clock watch, and after three and a half minutes, they're going, yeah, yeah, now I can feel something, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My final point before I leave you all today, uh, don't be afraid of this stuff. I make it look magical. I do it on purpose. I make it look more sophisticated than it necessarily is. I kind of have to, it's my job. I'm here to entertain as well as to inform. But don't, don't, don't for a second underestimate how powerfully strong the suggestions that you give people are. How life-changing your tone of voice can be. The way you hold yourself. 
The way you walk into the room gives somebody a message and that holds within it a suggestion and that suggestion changes their belief and their belief changes their reality. Thank you.